Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios, and today I'm going to be working on a spitter from Privateer Press's Monster Apocalypse. I'm going to be painting this in a sort of altered version of my comic style approach, where I'm going to be trying to emulate the artistic style of Frank Miller, specifically Frank Miller's Sin City comic books. So I'm going to be using just a lot of heavy black and white, and just a little splash of color. Now I've gone ahead and I've just basically base coated the whole model in white. So I accomplished that base coat by first just priming the whole model in a white primer and then dry brushing the entire model with a coat of Citadel Ceramite White and then touching that up with a coat of P3 Mora White which is just a little bit whiter. Now with my normal approach to comic book style I do all my base coats and highlights first and add all the black lining afterwards. I'm going to be flipping that on its head here and do all the black lining first and then just add a little bit of color at the end because I'm trying to emulate the look of basically a black and white comic. And we've got the white down, so black comes next. And for that, I'm gonna be using Hagen's Black Magic Drawing Ink. This is a waterproof ink used for, well, drawing, hence the name Drawing Ink. But it works really, really well for comic book style miniatures as well. It's a very opaque black ink, has a very nice flow characteristic to it, and it won't run or bleed if you start to apply a wash over top of it. So my first step is just to isolate the different areas of detail and basically that's going to be just sort of taking these sort of tentacly mouth bits, outlining them, and then sort of starting to just work outlines in between these sort of segmented areas along the back. As well as got some little sort of bumps and pustules and so on, and the teeth. And I'm just going to be kind of, you know, picking the teeth out individually. Now the mouth, I kind of want the inside to just be nice and deep and black, so we'll work that in there shortly. The brush I'm using here is a Series 33 size triple zero from AS Handover. Like I say, first I'm just going to work around the model, isolating sort of the distinct aspects. So in this case, I'm trying to isolate the mouth bits from the rest of the model. Then we can work on the smaller details like the pustules and so on. Now I'm making this line specifically a little bit on the heavier side. You know, I'm applying a fair bit of ink to it. And it's because I want it to read as a nice deep transition very easily from the table. If you've watched my other comic book style tutorials, you know that one thing I really like to preach is sort of just letting your mistakes happen, leave them where they lie. So if you make a brush stroke where you didn't plan on it, especially with the black ink, don't try and fix it right away. Don't like bust out the white paint and immediately try and solve it. Just save it for later because it may not end up being a problem. Here, for example, I tried to outline this from straight down if I look from this angle, there's actually a really deep sort of uh, crevice or channel underneath that tentacle. So I'm just going to go and fill that with black ink because from most angles it doesn't really matter. And that'll just give us a more defined outline around that part. And it can be pretty important when you're working on a model like this to check it from different angles to make sure that, you know, what you think you outlined actually works from multiple different angles, from different viewpoints. Because sometimes there is a deep undercut like that. Or a little bit of hidden detail that you can only see from certain angles.
Now across the front of the mouth here, obviously there's not really anywhere to separate. What I'm gonna do is just sort of fill in underneath this and just bring it up into this sort of little groove between the, uh, the segments just a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of a round shape. Just take that a little further here. So the idea here is that anything that's kind of downward facing is really not too important, especially from a tabletop standpoint. And so we can just black it out and not really worry about it. So I'm being pretty liberal with the black ink here along that bottom. So I'm just going to kind of repeat that process along the inside of the mouth here. Now I can start to build a little more shape. So with the major sort of details isolated, I'm working on the sort of interstitial details. So the areas that, you know, within a detail where there's sort of sub areas, it's like isolating the tentacles from each other here or soon those plates across his back and so on. And you can see as I go, I'm working a lot of black in. And the idea there is that the more black I work in now, the less detailing I have to do later.
And as I'm doing this as well, I can start to work in a little bit of the, uh, the surface texture. You can see I'm just bringing some little short lines in here. You really, you know, as much as I sort of mentally try to break the uh, black work down into three steps, so it's, you know, outlining, uh, interstitial detailing, then like final detailing, really you can kind of just do all three at once, especially if you have a better mental image of what it is you're doing. There's nothing saying I can't start that line and then, you know, pull these little details out of it as I go. Now there's a lot of sculpted line on these tentacles. I'm basically just actually ignoring most of it. There's far more than I need. And for the style I'm kind of trying to accomplish here, it's a little too uh, fine green. So instead I'm just adding my own and not really worrying about it. In some cases here, I'm not even really so much adding little sort of textured lines as I am just sort of breaking up the uh, straightness of the um, outline, you know, by just making it have some little flanges to it and so on. It lets uh, the imagination kind of do the rest of the work. Okay, so that's the tentacles basically done there. I'm just going to continue now isolating the teeth area as well as starting to sort of build up detail in the segments in the back. So the teeth get really tricky because they're in this recessed area. And really I'm just ultimately not concerned with getting all of them. If I get a decent number, if it looks menacing, I've done well enough. I'm going to start by filling in the sort of there's like a throat hole or an esophagus at the back here. And this gets tricky. This is an area where I just accept I'm going to make some mistakes and that most of them aren't really going to matter. You know, as long as when I'm done you see a bunch of teeth, it still works. There we go. Toothy enough. Now I could probably do a little bit of cleanup work in it, but ultimately it looks like a toothy mouth. It gets the point across. 
didn't lose too much sanity trying to uh, outline all of them. So I'm going to start working on some of these uh, surface details here. Now, like the tentacles, I want to start to black out sort of the bottom of this uh, white area here. The uh, tail, I guess, or main body, whatever. I'm just working the black along the bottom edge and pulling it up between some of these segments. I'm intentionally being a little bit sort of fast and loose with my brushwork here and that's specifically because I want to try and maintain as much of the look of this being a hand-drawn image as possible. So here with these sort of, I guess we'll call them spines across his back, I'm electing to paint the back side of them each in black, so as it faces the rear of the model. And that's just to help break up the continuous amount of white that they produce otherwise. And I sort of just decided to pick a facing and work them from that direction.
So we're just about done the black here. It actually went significantly quicker than I expected. I'm just going to uh, work a little more detail into these sort of larger areas here. As you can see, there's some folds in the skin. So just going to accent a couple of them. Maybe make this shadow a little bit heavier. Let's give it a once over. It's a little flat and boring right in this area too. Build on some of these shadows. And start to just sort of maybe imply some skin texture. There we go, it's a decent black to white ratio, I think. Oh, just a little bit more on this big tentacle right up top here. Well, that's it for the black and white. Now we just want to get a splash of color in there. Now for that, I'm going to be using Vallejo Game Color Warlord Purple. But this paint is a little bit on the translucent side, so I'm going to mix just a little bit of Citadel Zeru's purple in as well to just make it a little more opaque. Now the trick here is I want to leave the black showing through, so I want to make sure I get a little bit of water in this. Get it down to just a little bit more than a glaze. You know, it should be just a little bit translucent. And I just want to start bringing it over the tentacle areas here. So the main body, the teeth are all going to remain just black and white and the tentacles are going to get just this little bit of uh, this hint of purple, right? This is where the Higgins Black Magic being a waterproof ink really starts to be important because if it wasn't this might just start to make all the black ink just kind of start to run I tried a few weeks ago I was using a calligraphy ink for this style of painting and it was not waterproof and when I started applying a little bit of a Citadel wash to it it just the ink just picked right back up off the model and just ran all over the place. Needless to say, that wasn't the desired outcome. thing you can see here is this is actually blotting out a little bit of the black because it is just a little bit opaque it's not quite the consistency of a wash and that's okay it's just something to be aware of you know if I had used something like Citadel Druchi Violet I probably wouldn't be getting that effect but it's also not really the shade of purple I want so I could go back in and touch up the blacks if I really felt it was necessary or I can just leave them alone. So I just want to give that a once over, make sure there's no spots where a little bit of white showing through.
What I want to do next is just get a little bit of a highlight on there. So I'm going to do that by just mixing in a little bit of P3 Moro White and just doing a normal highlight. Now this is where I sort of really, I think, deviate from my intended Frank Miller style. Because you don't really see a lot of highlights in his colors, because his colors are usually, at least regarding Sin City, they're really a highlight in and of themselves. Like, they're a shock of color on an otherwise black and white page. And the color doesn't really need highlights, because it's already doing its job properly. Um, because I'm painting these for visibility on a tabletop, however, I like to uh, keep that in mind. Just add some highlights that'll make them stand out just a little bit better. Alright, and there's the completed spitter from Monster Apocalypse's Lords of Cthulhu. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic. Hey, if you enjoyed this video here on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new videos. You can also join me at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday evenings at 8.30pm Eastern for live painting and sculpting shows. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps cover the cost of paint, models, and all my video production gear, but more importantly, it helps keep food in my kid's belly and a roof over his head. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons and Twitch subscribers, both past and present. Your ongoing support and encouragement is really what makes this possible. Thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.